Hello friends. So some of you still might have questions about the CO2 levels and hyperventilation, hypoventilation, etc. In this session I will explain more about that. So basically, there's different types of breathing techniques. In some breathing techniques, you breathe more than you actually need. This is hyperventilation. In other techniques, uh, you breathe a bit less than you actually need. This is called hypoventilation. When you're doing hyperventilation, breathing more than you need, you're gassing off, you're, you're releasing a lot of carbon dioxide out of the body. Okay? Normally, the levels of uh, oxygen are already quite saturated in the blood. It's already around 96% if you breathe normally and good. But if you breathe much stronger, it will go up to about 98%, sometimes even 99%, but not more than that. So when you're doing hyperventilation, you cannot really bring a lot more oxygen into the body. But what happens is that you bring a lot of carbon dioxide out of the body. Okay? Now, carbon dioxide makes the blood more acidic. It brings down the pH level. When the pH level of the blood is a bit lower, it means the blood is more acidic. There is more uh, CO2 in the blood. And the hemoglobin on which the uh, uh, oxygen is attached and transported through the body and then released into the cells, the hemoglobin needs a bit of acidity for the oxygen to be released. Okay, so therefore, if you hyperventilate a lot, you bring a lot of carbon dioxide out of the body, the blood becomes more alkaline, less acidic, and therefore it's harder for the O2, for the oxygen, to be released into the cells. Now another point what happens if you hyperventilate, if you bring carbon dioxide out of the blood, then the, there is what's called vasoconstriction. So all the veins in the body, all the capillaries, all the small veins, they start to contract. Okay. Also the bronchi, the, the, the lung tubes, everything starts to contract a little bit. It's almost as if the body is saying, okay, wait a minute, what is happening? Too much uh, gassing off of the, too much breathing is happening. We have to shut things off a little bit. We have to decrease a bit the flow of blood. So everything tightens up. This is called vasoconstriction. When you're doing hypoventilation, very calm and slow breathing techniques and the CO2 levels go up a little bit in the blood which means the blood becomes more acidic which also means that it's easier for the oxygen to be released from the hemoglobin and also there's vasodilation. Vasodilation means that the veins and the capillaries they open up a little bit. The bronchi, everything opens up a little bit to increase the flow of blood and the transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now it's very good to understand uh, why do you get so dizzy and why can you sometimes even faint if you're not careful with strong breathing techniques. Now, as I explain in a lot of times in this course and in, in, in different sessions, never push your limit. It's not about feeling very high or spaced out or this is absolutely not uh, what this, uh, these techniques are about. It's learning um, to do enough to feel that you're opened up, uh, to feel that you have unblocked some things. Because it's really not uh, good for you if you start to really feel super dizzy or even start to faint. Let me explain why. You know now that when you're hyperventilating, you bring a lot of carbon dioxide out of the body. The blood becomes very alkaline. There's vasoconstrictions, all the veins and the capillaries, also a lot around the brain, they all start to contract. The alkalinity of the blood makes it very hard for the oxygen to be released from the hemoglobin into the cells. So what you're actually doing is you're depriving your brain from oxygen when you're hyperventilating a lot. 
Some people think like, ah, when you're doing hyperventilation, you bring so much oxygen into the blood and into the body that you start to really feel very spaced out. It, that's not the case at all. As you know, you cannot bring much more oxygen into the blood than uh, you normally already have. It's about the carbon dioxide level. So you bring a lot of carbon dioxide out of the blood. The blood becomes very alkaline. It becomes really hard for the oxygen to be released into the cells. And on top of that, you're uh, depriving yourself from the blood flow from oxygen because there's not enough blood flow to the brain. So you're actually uh, starting to feel dizzy and faint because your brain doesn't have enough oxygen. And on top of that, if you're doing a full breath hold at the last breath and you're holding the breath in and making a bit of pressure, there's too much pressure on the head, on the brain, because there is contraction already in the blood, uh, in the body from the veins and the capillaries, which makes more pressure on the brain. And then you're doing even extra blood pressure because you're holding the breath in and you're pushing out uh, the lungs and making more pressure in the body. So that's why uh, you, you can even start to faint. And if sometimes people do, it is really, really not a good, a good thing. Really not a good thing. In the worst case even, you bring so much pressure on the heart that you can get heart problems. Even also on the brain, you can get mini strokes. Uh, small capillaries that start to, uh, under the big pressure, start to uh, break and you get a mini stroke. That can happen. So therefore, you have to be super careful with this. And thank God in all the sessions that I've done with people, the breathing sessions, nobody ever faint with that because I've never pushed my limits. I always told people, never push your limits. Uh, just feel until you have enough. Never do a full breath hold in, holding the breath in after your uh, rounds of uh, hyperventilative practices. Be very careful, be very gentle. And I'm sure if you uh, guide people through it like that, without pushing, let them feel and experience their uh, limits in a safe way, then it should all be safe, okay? And also, uh, like I explained before, if somebody already has some heart problems or some uh, problems with the brain or epileptic attacks or brain pressure problems, make sure that you don't do any strong uh, breathing practices with them, okay? Guide them through some other breathing practices and maybe just take some sessions to do it step by step. Start off with some slow practices. If they feel okay, okay, then it's safe. You can go a little bit further in a certain practice. Okay, and like that step by step, but don't start right away with some strong practices if you don't feel it's completely safe. All right.